Well, hello there. I just want to give you a really quick precursory heads up as we dive into the Series 6 reaction episodes of Inside Number 9. Stephen and I are recording these podcasts live alongside our lovely audience uh, on YouTube immediately after watching each new episode of uh, Series 6 of Inside Number 9. Uh, we don't know what to expect from each one. We're like everybody else. We're not prepared. We literally just watched it and are capturing our authentic, raw reaction to it. So if you're looking for deep level, intelligent entertainment, insight and wisdom about the content of the episode and you're trying to make sense of it, then you might well be a little bit disappointed. Uh, but we will be diving back into the series once this whole thing has aired. Um, so if you want to just hang out alongside two people who love the unexpected treats and surprises that come from experiencing a new series of Inside Number 9, then you're most welcome to come along with us. Uh, if you wouldn't appreciate that, then we recommend you coming back later. Uh, thanks to all of you who understand and appreciate this. It means the world to have you on board. Uh, right, that said, let's uh, head into this week's um, episode of A Quiet Night Inside Number 9. This meeting is being recorded. Stephen. Andrew. Do you fancy spending a quiet night inside number nine? I guess I probably do. Hello, everybody joining us on the YouTube feed. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we were just having a chat after watching this sixth episode of series six. Um, and I think both of us had the same first thought which was how the hell do we talk about that <laughs> i'm i'm feeling quite sort of uh i don't know blown away and overwhelmed by that episode yeah if i i just figured out the last time i felt like this after watching something and it's weird because there were some similar things it was when the film mother finished at the cinema have you seen that no it's Darren, Ar Darren Aronofsky film, which is one big biblical allegory for Genesis up to the, basically the entire Old Testament. And it all goes to hell in a handcart in that. Um, and at the end of that, I just found myself like, don't know mm. what I just saw <laughs> at all. And then our friend Dan was sat next to me and he said, Tell you what would be in <laughs> now. Blue Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Which happened after the lives of others when I was in a silent cinema, <laughs> a full silent cinema with our Welsh friend Dan. <laughs> and everybody was just paused at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the film. Dan is quite loud and uppy uppy piped. <laughs> I tell you what would be inappropriate now. Blue buzz. <laughs> it would have been. But what was more inappropriate was saying was that. that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so episode six of series six. I've got that the wrong way around. Uh, series six, episode six. Last Night of the Proms. Directed by Matt Lipsy, produced by Adam Tandy, written by Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton. First aired on Monday, the 14th of June, 2021, uh, 40 minutes ago. Um, I don't know how we're going to sort of tackle this one. I guess I guess let's just let's kind of just sort of head through and kind of deviate off as we come across stuff. I mm. guess is probably our best bet. I think, and probably, yeah. I think that I'm really glad that I know the last couple of weeks we've decided to try and do a prediction as to what we thought was coming. <laughs> um, and from what I'd seen, Hello. all I really had was that I thought this was going to be the like the Middle England suburban household um, episode, like our last gasp and um, I guess Love's Great Nana's Adventure party. to some extent, Nana's Party, all those ones. Um, and then it started off with the guy in the front, outside the front of the house and thought, Okay, I don't know um, <laughs> mm. what this is going to be if it, if we are going to have like a horror bent to things. Um, and yeah, so we started off with that initial shot and that, then that was kind of just sort of pushed to one side and we headed into a Last Night at the Proms party. 
with Steve's character throwing himself all in on last night of the proms. Incredibly so. Yeah. And Penny was the only one that witnessed this mysterious mm. figure who, and, and the first time she saw him, it was, it looked like she knew him. Yeah. And or, I think or is interesting given the shape of how things go later on. I don't know. There's something in that. I did wonder if um, she had actually seen him or whether he was a figment of her imagination mm -hmm. because she didn't want to say anything and she didn't say anything, which would be weird if you saw someone unfamiliar skulking around outside someone else's house that you're just visiting in and saying, nothing, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to see. And that, but that's what she, she saw, almost had that sort of, um, attitude of like oh there's there's a bloke at. it was it wasn't like a it was a no this is just a, a bloke skulking around outside yeah she then said later that she'd seen him a few times over the course of the day mm. and it wasn't a oh there's that guy i keep seeing that's a bit yeah, strange it was you're right it was yeah oh, guy outside yeah did you um, run down a prediction no i think uh, mainly because i i didn't think i even needed to go there <laughs> What well, was yours to you? So, um, it's obviously not right. But um, so last night, the proms has always been the best night of the year for Dawn and Mick. Brian has lost his patriotic fervor and they're about to get visited by a mysterious ghost. Someone who Mick hasn't seen for years. He gets killed by his own union flag whilst land of hope and glory is sung for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> there was some death. There was union flags involved in deaths. There were ghost like, like, you know, second comings and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's go through. Okay. So, so meet Ollie. Yep. Yeah. Who's doing a degree in music tech. Not music. Not music. Machines. Um, He's putting all the music in those little boxes, He's making it sound. Putting it in the boxes. Taking all the frequencies out. Yeah. According to his dad, who's a <laughs> bit harsh. But um, And Brian is an interesting kind of character. He's, he's like Father, what's his name in Father Ted, isn't he, with his uh, sort of... Oh, Father Jack. Father Jack. With his yes. All sort of <laughs> hilarious, but also tragic into interjections Interjection. yeah 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 and you've got so you've got a few different threads going on as well haven't you you've kind of obviously got the brexit thing the there's a, a remainer and a uh brexiteer partner. what are they called <laughs> I don't know. brexiteers brexiteer and a remainer um you've got reese again playing a gay character yeah not for the first time this series. Um, and that whole, you know, he'd rather, he'd like Tom Cruise, he'd like a bit of Tom Cruise in him <laughs> rather than what Penny would like is a little bit of Tom Cruise in him. <laughs> um, and then the whole, I guess, the performative aspect of everything. So, like, you know, you kind of introduced to that idea of the pantomime side of the, last night at the proms where they're pretending to cry and all of that stuff. Hmm. And, and even that is then revisited. I, th I found it quite interesting. You know, when you, when you see Brian's character go from the remainer who, who is judges uh, them for their attitude, yeah, judging them for their attitude, their anti foreigner attitude and all that sort of stuff. And then ends up being like that, that is sort of, called into question as like is that a performative sort of thing stance that he's taking because actually he becomes the most intolerant i think what was quite interesting i think it's i think i'm able to sort of come at this from a fairly um objective standpoint of how the kind of characterizations of people who voted for brexit versus those who voted to remain and how Reese's character is portrayed as he's the miserable one 
sat there darkly moaning about everything while the Brexiteering family are up having a wonderful time dancing and singing with each other. And it almost seems like a bit of a flip of the general general kind of behaviours we see kind of, I don't know, sort of tip, this kind of typical attitudes we're kind of shown, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean. Mm. Usually it's kind of the description of the, the Brexit voting public as sitting there darkly, snidely remarking about Johnny Foner, Foreigner all the time, when in fact, with this, Reese was the worst person in the room. Yeah, with his sort of snide comments and the Rocky Horror, Rocky Horror shit pit. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon my French. Go again. Rocky Horror show for retired school teachers was the term yes. for this kind of, yeah. Um. Yeah, no, that's a really good point, actually. That actually, he's a sort of, there's there's a bit, there's a, if you look at it as a light-hearted, just enjoying things, kind of festival atmosphere type deal, where you're not completely tethered to everything, like the meaning of everything. Yes. And that stuff. And he does have the most, um, the most overtly, negative attitudes towards german people <laughs> well, I mean, and that's... and and the christ figure <laughs> as well exactly i mean his display of like putting um what's his name I've, i think i've got confused by names here um is he brian he's brian yeah ralph is the dad is the right. granddad um sorry i'm confusing things uh and yeah, Mick is Steve. When he like puts uh, Dawn in her place with the DNA test and everything, and it's like it's almost who cares more about a being right and b like kind of tribalizing the whole thing, and then the the way that he delivers his his German accent and like all of that stuff is just like, mate. <laughs> especially when her her reaction doesn't suggest that it's the the innate germanness that's the issue really it's the bit about dad it's and the fact that she carries on caring him caring for him after that and there's no kind of yeah. question in her mind of well this, that means absolutely nothing mm-hmm to be honest the label actually means absolutely nothing which i i think as you as we come back to watch it i mean there's so many things that oh well, this needs at least four at least so four many. rewatches um but i think that's going to be a real theme just the which i, I suppose is the, is the kind of general arcing twist of the whole episode which would be the the performative side of stuff um the the kind of underlying values are maybe because you see um uh mick like he is much more tolerant of yusuf than than brian is like he's he's like oh he might he, you know he has the ocado line doesn't he like but yeah. <laughs> kind of that he's his first port of call is to give him the benefit of the doubt for being an intruder in the house um and whereas brian is straight to the no like i'm gonna even though he's already been stabbed by a pitchfork i'm gonna oh just, another go right yeah okay then there's the the sailor's hornpipe scene mm-hmm. which is yeah quite, quite yeah an intense scene it very much is <laughs> any penny bobbing along with yusuf <laughs> as she kind of shares the the story of like what you know brian their their marriage their loveless marriage that's you know that again as you say heading down that sort of uh that nana's party route not love's great adventure it's like the opposite right. of that but um yeah the kind of middle england loveless marriage rude pulls jake and stay watch well, it there's the countdown similarities to rupaul's drag race yeah you think <laughs> um 
and and she just completely defiles Yusuf, essentially. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's another word for it. <laughs> as as Brian sits in there talking about how like British Airways, it's not the British Airways music, it's whatever that is. Uh, it's the British Airways team. Uh, it's the <laughs> Ovis theme. It's, <laughs> Old Spice. Let's not get snobby about it. It's the Old Spice advert. Yeah. And the fact that Brian is pushing his entire family away from him, you can see him almost pushing Ollie towards his aunt and uncle. Mm. Because Brian's not interested in learning to dab. <laughs> that was so good (laughs) yeah and like even so even in that in that scene was that that scene was that the sailor's hornpipe scene um you see you see the there's a bit of dabbing going on at the end of that while they're all sort of celebrating at the end and then they all sit down and like like that was yes And, and and you see the love between um uh mick and dawn and, mm. the, and there's something really quite nice. That's that's well, yeah. In a way, there, there's your love's great great adventure couple there. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Oh man, they're so good at like creating those almost subversive relationships that you think it was that shouldn't um, work. That shouldn't be okay. Yeah, there was more of the royal family about the setting of this one. It was a little bit bleaker and a bit more run down than the polish of Nana's party. Because that house is very sort of stark and uncluttered to a, to an extent compared to this, where it just everything looks a bit older and a little bit more sort of run down, um, Wait, including yeah, the was, buffet. And there was that, the, the kind of scene with the there's no place like home part where it's like, a, it's a lamenting sort of, kind of soundtrack Hmm. and when you're kind of looking at the ornaments and the picture on the wall and all of that stuff and yeah I I thought that was an interesting I'm I'm looking forward to going and re-watching that but like almost a from um, Dawn's perspective something is missing maybe that's a like a yeah I know what you mean the longing looks at those things Yeah. yeah and maybe it is she knows that she doesn't quite belong yeah that's true that that sense i don't know is that is that when ralph just comes out (laughs) with sea kyle yes Uh, she touches his arm he's sea kyle and then something yeah yeah um that's after stroke my pizzle (laughs) stroke my pizzle (laughs) um and then ollie wants to go so he's ready to leave, um, but he's not allowed because uh, Brian has to put up with it. So he's putting his son through it, <laughs> which is a really great attitude to have, I think, as a parent. <laughs> yeah, if I'm going to suffer this. So are you, son? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, he is revel- he is reveling in how much he is hating it. Part of him just loves to snob all over this <laughs> which i think i think that's a good it's a good observation of you know people like me <laughs> who, who quite happily you see me during eurovision <laughs> well, i think i mean there's probably a lot of people yeah it's, it's it's a kind of it's a commentary on things like that isn't it eurovision and last night the proms uh and other things where there's I guess it's it's when other people are enjoying something and you're like, I resent your enjoyment. <laughs> I, I want to like do a wee wee all over. And let me explain to you the fact that I don't enjoy this because I'm better than you. That's why I don't <laughs> That's enjoy it. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's really derogatory. Um. So we haven't really spoken yet about the whole kind of Christ allegory thing. Mm-hmm. And what the various pointers meant. So there was there was obviously the water the water into wine when Ollie drank his mineral water and ended up throwing up because it strong yeah. wine. 
Jesus. Strong, yeah. Christ He's known for that. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, Boris making a mess of the dinner. <laughs> and then, uh, in fact, they've got a dog called Boris. And I think I saw a giant Churchill portrait in the back of the final shot mm. inside the house as well. Um, and he replaced it, feeding the six. So do you reckon <laughs> that was Boris who destroyed it? Well, it looked like he, it looked like Yusuf might have made him. He was starting to get it. involved with it, wasn't he, early on? Yeah, and I don't, I don't know what that was all about. No. Um, no, but it obviously put it back. Something there. Out of the freezer. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's a chef. <laughs> yeah. What else? Well, obviously there's the hand. Stigmata. Yeah. Um, Speared. Whilst on the whilst on the cross, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's one you're going to have to sort of. I think that's going to need to percolate a bit. Obviously, his clothes, like every his look. Yeah. His, and what was being the outsider? Yeah. So she said that she had denied him three times. Yeah. What were her denials? I guess she said she'd seen him on the bus, seen him somewhere else, and hadn't helped, hadn't yeah. he acknowledged. Was, yeah, I don't know what what it was but yeah um what was the repeat stabbing all about why did brian have another go with a little almost like a letter open <laughs> i can't think what that would be no um that would have to require some more thought and reflection as the whole thing will <laughs> everything <laughs> to will a very big extent <laughs> i think like it's the most i think it's the most like flawed i've been by an episode certainly in this series um obviously christine is one that it would yeah i'm so glad we didn't have to talk about that straight after it good um, lord yeah but i think this was so densely packed with things as well and it was highly charged because i think for me like the reaction would be okay the music is a is a massive high charging point um, yeah, and so everything that's going on with the mix of emotions that come from all of that music, you know, I've got very mixed feelings about um, about it all. Like it cr creates crazy thoughts in my head, um, mm. and then to lay on top of that, like all of this stuff, and then this idea of like, no, actually, this this figure that they've introduced into this is potentially just meant to be like a second coming of christ even though like it's yeah. well who then manages the third who then manages another coming later on as well when yeah, yeah. <laughs> they bundle him into the back of the car and then there he is at the end to embrace penny and i yeah i'd like to yeah i i think that i what you just said there i think almost all of those deserve their own rewatch almost every single one of those foci deserve mm. a watch on those bases mm. um i don't know yet whether i enjoyed it or not which is a weird feeling to have yeah because there was so much and because yeah there are ones that so christine i was floored but i immediately went wow, that was incredible because I think the emotion was very obvious and the emotion I felt at the end of Christine was overwhelmingly, wow, you've just made me feel some such sadness and empathy for that lady hmm. that that writing was incredible. Hmm. With this, I don't really know what I'm feeling about it right now <laughs> other than a yeah. bit all over the shop. I think, I think what I feel they've managed to achieve which is remarkable is a sense of traverse like bridging the divide between all of the different things going on right now um so i think as a as a kind of political thing mm. i mean it's probably not all all the divide no but what but watching that specific divide 
watching the Christ figure being laid on a Union Jack like that across the cro um, the cross of the flag was very much like there's something here that I don't appreciate right now. I think it's a really a really powerful symbolic thing that again is going to require some <laughs> a lot deeper reflection and a, and a, a lot more watches but it's not coming from you know how everything's so polarized right now mm -hmm. um i think it manages to 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 bring some sort of bridge to that in that there's a kind of a sympathy and an empathy with the different yeah sides of it right and it's and and that christ figure is the is that br <laughs> almost the bridge that that binds them um yeah together they stab him up <laughs> yeah and it's like and what it's what are we will, what are we put what are we sacrificing at the cost of either like this kind of weird performative patriotism or this weird performative anti-everythingism and you know like we're willing like within the episode itself there's probably a willingness to sacrifice the relationships that we are enjoying in our lives right now like the people that we are surrounded by like there's a there's a distance between different people within that within that group and um yeah i don't know hey, ultimately you saw someone who was happy to sit there and disparage people for wanting to tear things apart decides to take a course of action to deliberately try and tear a family apart and almost deciding that his his political viewpoints were more important were more important and making that point was far more important than the cohesive family his in-laws because he wanted to tear that down yeah and there's a lot of there's a lot of switching around and a lot of i think holding up a mirror that went on in that episode to certain things that we think sometimes and certain ways that we perceive things and just almost suggesting to take take a look yeah and i wonder um, if they've managed to, uh, and because you don't know because you obviously only have your own your own perspective but mm. like i wonder if they've managed to hold a mirror up to to everybody <laughs> or mm. whether it uh, yeah i don't know and, and it's really difficult to to be able to say that but yeah, I'd be interested to to hear kind of re reactions to it and responses from from different quarters. Like, because yeah. I know, I know, like, and that's one of the great things about Inside Number Nine is it it isn't a specifically one, you know, political view. Lilt to it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Lilt. Mm, I haven't had a lilt in it. Lilt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Right, yeah, I feel we've got a bit. We've got a bit um, stodgy, not stodgy. That's that's bad. Like a bit. It's, it's all got quite heavy. Heavy. That's the word. Stodgy. They yeah. they mean the same thing. Yeah, they're pretty much similar to when you're baking, but not necessarily. Stodgy in feels like we've got stuck, but I think yeah. I just we've just got a bit heavy. Is it a good um, time to go and have a look about uh, look at some comments? Yeah, I think we're we've really actually talked a lot haven't we we have more than i thought we were the only thing i was gonna say was oh yeah go on um you know steve doing his accents yeah <laughs> uh, bernie clifton's dressing room it was <laughs> they were terrible <laughs> oh lang syne dab <laughs> so I, I i did there was a cream and jam we, we there was a jam and cream to speak about that this weekend weren't we? so me and steve went to um swansea and we can confirm there is a swansea um <laughs> we did uh we well, we went to see our friend dan who had a little mention at the beginning of this he loves bloopers <laughs> he loves bloopers um and we on on route had a conversation about uh jam and cream or cream and jam cream and jam jam and cream <laughs> <laughs> and that's about the extent of the story <laughs> <laughs> that's where that story ends but it was nice there was a little callback by uh you know Stephen Reese to a conversation they didn't know we'd had. <laughs> so let's see what people have said. 
I think it's interesting about um Ottilie said it'd be interesting what backlash there might be. And I think if you're if you're a Brexit voter watching this program, I think you've come out of it quite well, to be honest. I, I, and I don't think that either side of that debate has too much to complain about the way that their side of things was portrayed. Mm. Some of the farcical pantomime aspects of, obviously, the extreme mm. kind of flags everywhere, that stuff. And but then, I think they, I think it was flipped up. I think they were flipped around enough ooh. to kind of hold a mirror. To, like you said, are you, are you holding a mirror to everyone to the extent that everyone goes, oh, I'd also like to pick apart his Britannia outfit, which it looked like it, the Norse helmet. <laughs> And I think there are probably more hodgepodge things there that kind of speak to the, the true melting pot that we are. It. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There's probably. I bet if we you go back and look at some of the the things lying around as well, it's like mm. okay, and even her DNA. It's it, it's like okay, this is what makes this is. If you want to talk about Great Britain, the things that make it great is that melting pot. Is that you know that. Compliments of all the fact there is no purity, like it's yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So I saw uh, we had some stuff. Um, Boris was it, blamed for making a mess. The Messiah replaced the food. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's poetic, Tim. Beautiful. I like Tim's given us some. Um, he's filled in the gaps for us around the names of all the pieces of music. <laughs> Largo from New World Symphony is the Hovis theme. Ho Fontana from Carmina Barana is the Old Spice advert. That's an interesting piece of music. Flower Duet is the British ad Adway Airways ad. Adway's Air. <laughs> Tim, on it. So, yeah, I think um, we'll probably get more out of that one in about six weeks' time. I think we will, and I'm looking forward to probably watching this every day the week that we record <laughs> that next and from now until then i'll fit <laughs> the other ones in around as well absolutely um yeah so this is the end of our live shows um thank you so much to everybody who's joined us maybe for one for two or for three or four or five or six <laughs> i wasn't gonna get a number between one and six we <laughs> thank you for joining it for us i'm good with at us and if anybody has anything that they want to share about any of the episodes of the new series, then um, do email us a quiet night inside no nine at gmail.com or uh, get in touch via Twitter at a Q N I N nine. Um, and we will, yeah, kind of reflect on what we receive as we go into each episode. I think we're going to have a week off next week because we'll be, recording sunday night so we'll do wuthering heist on sunday and that just gives me a bit more time to edit it uh, it'd be nice to sort of put in a bit put in a few clips and things like like we did first time around the other ones i like the old back in the old days back in the old days when i used to spend eight hours editing each episode but we'll try and <laughs> we'll try and learn from what we've um what we've learned over the last few weeks <laughs> yeah what we've been taught um <laughs> cool. well we'll uh yeah catch you again soon keep in touch bye bye the recording has stopped